The Hirsch Effect are one of my favorite bands, if not my outright favorite in recent years. There's something about the combination of styles bringing together, rooted in post-hardcore but with plenty of progressive elements alongside mathcore, electronic elements, and a stunning you for catchy hooks. Their music is just so colorful in the way I enjoy music the most. Technical but not overindulgent, melodic but not saccharine, heavy but not sludgy or monotone, intense but not overly chaotic. And out of the four full length albums they put out, I can't say I think of even a single one of them as bad or even mediocre. Hell, the vast majority of their songs range from good to excellent, and narrowing down to just a list of 10 proved to be a rather difficult task. So I didn't. Yeah, this is a top 12, not a top 10, but I have strong reasons for including both picks below that nice and even 10 that most of us like this cover, and I'll get to that as I get to each of those songs individually. I'm also foregoing honorable mentions as, well, it did mostly be repeating comments towards songs that did make the list, but towards songs that aren't quite as great as the ones that did. With that out of the way, I present the top 10, 12 best search effect songs. The band's first album, Holon Hiberno, is, by no small margin, their weakest in my opinion. It's a much more disjointed record where pretty much every song is here three or so minutes long, or constructive song segments two or three minutes long that don't feel like cohesive holes. And while the whole thing flows well front to back, it leaves any individual songs feeling unable to truly stand out. Well, except for this one. Yeah, this is the only song from this album to make this list and it's in no small part due to how straightforward this one is compared to the rest of the album. The song starts quite with a scratchy electronic beat, twinkly post rock guitars coming in to build a basic melody, and from there the song just continues to pick up momentum one element at a time, until it explodes halfway through into a stellar and instantly memorable hook, riding out that momentum to the end while still building ever so slightly from there. And let me clarify that the hooks from this band are all melodic for me. I don't speak a word of German, I don't know what the hell most of the lyrics are about, besides being generally political in nature. But the melodies they write and sing are so frequently massive earworms that can really draw you in on our listens before you come to understand the more complex songwriting going on underneath them. And it's those melodies that keep the songs memorable at the end of the day. It feels to me like Rianne took the strengths of this song in particular and applied it in Space, their follow-up album, as the two are quite similar in sound, yet the latter far overshadows the form in almost every way due to tighter and more focused songwriting. Writing. Speaking of... While my primary justification for the previous song is that leaving it off would be the total absence of the band's first album, my reasoning for including this one is a fair bit different. See, this particular song is what I consider THE definitive Hurt Effect song. It's the first song you'd show anyone to get them into this band, it showcases practically everything the band has to offer in a straightforward and relatively succinct way, and it stands on its own as a damn great song even besides that, though not one of their absolute best songs, obviously. There's moments of frantic, melodic energy, the first main motif the song kicks off with, that's woven into the more downbeat yet somewhat tense verses between vocal phrases, keeping the song flowing through its early phases. And there are touches of more abrasive tones scattered throughout these moments. There's the huge anthemic chorus that slows things down but widens the scope, providing a release to the energy preceding it. And then the halfway point hits, and the song develops into a wild and heavy instrumental breakdown, such as on riffing on this dissonant but vividly catchy four-note motif. You get it in heavy chord chugging, you get it in almost alien-sounding guitar tones, you get vocal ah-ahs playing out the same motif, all jumping back and forth in a whirlwind of sound. Little intrusions or slight alterations on that motif popping up in between phrases from time to time. It's the stuff like this that really makes this band stand out to me. How often they can take one motif and crank up the insanity to 11 without devolving into a complete mess of pointless noodling, like so many of their progressive or mathcore contemporaries often do. And that motif just keeps intruding on a song from that point forward breaking up the last verse and chorus, and showing up the cap things off at the very end. The start of Holon Anamisas is strong enough as is, but it's this song that really starts off where the album turns from merely great to one of my all-time favorites. And yes, expect plenty more from this one further down the list. One aspect that I felt was emphasized on Holon and Nozi more than on any of their other albums is the sense of flow. The way the album is constructed is so fundamentally perfect to me, with its rising and falling intensity throughout. It basically sees what Hiberna was attempting but didn't quite manage to achieve, in having an album long experience that still succeeds on a song to song level. And in that regard, it's easy to see Emphysema as just a transitional track on the album, starting off quiet as with the track that precedes it, and building with something intense that the next proper track of the album capitalizes on in a big way. And yet, it's that build that makes this one as compelling as it is. 
starting off with just vocals and acoustic guitar, before kicking into yet another infectious main motif, a theme that it rides throughout most of its first three minutes until it reaches a thunderous peak with yet another massive chorus. Admittedly, I may just be a sucker for 6-8 time signatures too. That definitely plays a factor in my enjoyment of this one. The song pulls back for a quieter and yet more frantic and jagged bridge after it reaches its first peak, more of a side of things to come than anything else, before hitting an even larger and more grandiose peak following it up to close out the song, somehow surprising just how huge and epic the chorus sounded the first time around. It's not one of the more complex songs the man put out, but it's definitely one that resonates strong with me on an emotional level, and really, storing up strong emotions is what I look for in music more than anything. So here's the part where I contradict what I said earlier in the video, because structurally speaking, this song is a disaster. It's less of a song and more of three different two to three minute song segments loosely stitched together. Kinda like the songs I'd be cried on Hiberno, eh? But there's one thing about the song that makes it not only distinct from those songs, but oh so much better. This song is the middle part of the three song suite that closes out Anamnesis, so the sheer intensity this song hits right out of the gate with is just capitalizing on the build of the previous track. But boy, it's it hit goddamn hard! These first few minutes are about the heaviest and most chaotic the band has ever sounded, between the 5 8 rhythm, the shrill and dissonant chords, and the newly guitar leads that friggin' speed up in the middle of each phrase, it's insane. And those guitar leads are, say it with me, incredibly catchy nonetheless. The intensity of this just bowls me right over every single time. And then, the song cuts back for another 6 8 build to probably one of the most climactic and overpowering courses of their entire discography. The emotional climax of the entire album, even. I can practically feel every last note sung during that peak deep down in my soul. And then it cuts back again, for just one of the most stunningly beautiful passages in the band's entire discography. A lonesome guitar playing freely without fixed tempo, joined by some piano interplay, and emotive line down after the sheer power preceding it transitions to the final piece of the suite. This is just a song of excesses. Excess intensity. Excess power. Excess emotion. While the individual parts of the song may not flow together stupendously well, each of them is so damn strong on its own that I have trouble not enjoying each and every second of it. And the purpose it serves, both in the suite and on the album as a whole, is effectively handled nonetheless. Again, there's a reason this is my favorite album from this band. Immediately following up the last song is the somber, emotional finale of that same suite. This song is basically the recent tension build up through the rest of the album in a real slow burn of a track, but one that's no less beautiful for it. It's essentially one long build up the entire way through, starting off with only the lingering piano from the previous track and a lonely vocal line. Strings enter one after the other, percussion joining soon after, until it feels like it's a full orchestra backing the song. The only real preview is the song streaming back halfway through, only to continue its climb aided by the momentum the faster paced electronic percussion provides. It's also interesting how, even in a song as low-key and straightforward as this, the band still has some of the progressive elements that they're known for, primarily a 7-4 tempo mixed in with the straightforward 4-4 moments. It gives the song that little extra bit of flavor to stand out. Also standing out is the ending, where the strings and vocals shift from triumphant and powerful to desperate and nightmarish. A gradual but noticeable shift that leaves the ending feeling like a bit of a shock, and makes me wonder to this day about the rambling phone call-like outro to the song and to the album as a whole. I think if I consider this extended outro a part of the song as a whole, it'd probably bring it down a little, but I see it more as a cap to the album than anything else. In either way, this is still a damn gorgeous song. One of the songs that goes straight for the jugular in terms of emotive resonance and accomplishes exactly what it sets out to do. My favorite of their battle type tracks by a good margin, even with a strong competition, and an excellent finale to the album as a whole. Hell, they would try to repeat this with Akarage on Escapist, which, while good in its own right, doesn't hold the can this in my opinion. Speaking of Escapist, though... The first song released off the band's most recent album, and hot damn, what an awesome first impression. This song is basically what would have you take the first two parts of Era and then into a more cohesive song, really. Dissonant and internal guitar leads that are still surprisingly catchy? Check. Jagged rhythms and non standard time signatures? Absolutely. Hard hitting, sticky as hell chorus? Check, check, check. Where this song overtakes that one, in my opinion, is in how it's constructed. There's no hard cut where you switch from the noisier sounds to the more melodic segments. In fact, 
The more chaotic elements never really go away. There are shades of them throughout the middle parts of the song, and the main guitar line comes back at the very end to close out the song. What does serve as a transition between the two sides of the song is just the most chaotic, out of control breakdown that Matt has ever put to record, and god it's such a rush. It's the kind of thing mouthcore bands tend to be known for, but these guys make it work better here than I've ever seen it work before, simply by keeping the tones in the middle register of the guitar instead of down to low chugging notes. And that bass groove in the middle is goddamn sexy. A great, thick tone, and a constant but never stagnant groove, with enough little intrusions on the straight triple flow that it neither gets boring nor loses oom. This is of course broken in by the song's chorus, which, while not the absolute best they've ever done, is still damn cathartic nonetheless. Escapist is a weird album in their discography, as it doesn't seem to be breaking new ground the way the whole trilogy intended to. Rather, it takes sounds of the previous album and refine them to a level previously unseen. And while I'd say it didn't work consistently, there's still enough on this album for me to call it great, and this is one of the highlights for sure. The first time I listened to this song was a mind-blowing experience, honestly. This song is so unhinged and does so much in so little time, it's honestly kind of absurd. And really, the wild absurdity of the song is a big part of its appeal, but an even bigger part of its appeal is how it all just ends up working? The intro is just noisy, chaotic guitar noodling and riffing, intending to immediately let you know what the song is about, being abrasive and loud. And that carries on to the moment when the vocals come in, which, this one moment right here, is probably the most intense and terrifying moment of the band's entire discography. It's borderline black metal in its sound, and it is so goddamn thrilling! The song in general is all over the place in terms of time signatures and levels of melody versus dissonance. Twangy guitar lines, chaotic chord riffs, but also the frantic and melodic chorus with the infectious ba 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 da hook and some really clever guitar lines. The song is constantly in motion with rarely a moment to break, and it can be overwhelming, but compelling all the same. The only real moment to rest comes in the Latin inspired middle section with a chill guitar solo accompanying it, and even then the song reminds you of a 7-8 groove that it's not really interested in taking a break. Of course, the song comes back in hard right after that and carries that on through until the end, where the rest of the song twists back to let the strings take over the ending with an oddly beautiful finale that said goes into the next track of the album quite well. Yeah, speaking of album flow again, this song basically caps off the first long climb of this album, where each song seems to outdo the intensity and insanity of the previous one, and I don't think any song in the album succeeds at that more than this goddamn madhouse of a song. I recommend that Absence is a definite first song for anyone checking out this band to get into, but I recommend this one for any new listeners wanting to see just how far off the deep end this band can go with their sound, and still succeed with flying colors. Another middle key song for the band, and probably the one I like the absolute most out of all their songs like this. This song serves as a reprieve between two of the noisier moments of this album, a bright spot before the loud and frantic ending to come, and it's practically a pop rock song in all aspects, between its bright chords and insanely catchy hook. Except, of course, there are a few things here that stand out. For one, the verses of the song are in 31 16th time, basically every other measure they drop the last 16th note. It's a weird decision for sure, and one of those kind of things that could have set the flow of the song if handled poorly, but it almost serves as a constant reminder to keep yourself focused on that song while you're listening to it. It's attention grabbing more than anything else. And that glittery synth line that plays out the stilted rhythm is such a cute little touch. It's incredibly sticky, more of a new rhythm than maybe anything else on the list, really, and it sets the brighter yet somber tone of the song quite well. The hammering chord riff to place under the soaring power of the chorus is another highlight of this one for me. It sufficiently matches the power of the vocals here without overtaking them, leading to an effectively climactic moment overall, and the mournful guitar solo between the second chorus and the outro is goddamn gorgeous to boot. I don't know, I feel like talking about this one is almost kind of wrong. It's so straightforward that all the strains are on full display even from a single listen, and yet, on repeated listens it never gets tiresome or stale, only more impactful. It's possibly the single most accessible track on this entire list, and while not exactly the sound the band is most known for, it's far from unwelcome, and really only serves to prove that they're capable of diversifying their sound without watering down the core to make their sound so recognizable, at least to me. This song is sort of a different take on the song that ended up my number one spot, and while I don't think it 
quite lives up to that one. It's not far behind, and it's damn excellent to boot. You may notice that the songs at the top of this list trend towards the longer end of the band's discography, which may in part be due to my own bias towards songs in the 8 to 10 minute range, but it's also just a testament to how well the band can execute songs in this range consistently. This song is one of the more atmospheric and brighter tracks in their discography, that still has enough of a harder edge to it not just be another chill, quiet track. There are so many gorgeous moments here, from the ambient opening, to that repeated 5-4 motif running through large chunks of the song, the quiet break right after the song's loudest moments, and the beautiful climactic swell of the ending. The song ebbs and flows in a way that few other songs in their discography can match, too. Throughout the first half of the song, there's this sense of constant build that escalates into a jagged, abrasive instrumental break, leading to a heavy breakdown following it, bookended by more of that same instrumental bit. For the record, a surprisingly addictive heavy groove, one of the most memorable parts of the song. And after that climax, the song strips back to its calmest moments, with some gorgeous drum and guitar work, returning to the main motif and building it up to something even more grand than the song had before. It's such a satisfying build and payoff both times, and there aren't any rough transitions between its different segments either. Really, the only thing about this song that keeps it from being any higher on this list is that it doesn't have a particularly memorable vocal performance. The vocals are full of power when they need to be, and I especially like the carefree ad-libbing during the verses, but the chorus itself has a much stickier guitar line than vocal melody. The only moments where the vocals stand out tend to be in the quiet moments of the song, where they have almost no choice but to be the main focus. It's more of an instrumentally driven song than anything else, and it's a very, very strong one, but not quite strong enough to make it to the top 3. Still a killer track though, and the pinnacle of the latest album for me. And here's the first part of that aforementioned suite ending off Anamnesis. Yeah, that golden 20 plus minute run of tracks right at the very end is one of the biggest reasons this album has stuck with me so much, I'd say. And even if the first time shines as the absolute high of the bunch, well, I've already gushed plenty about how much I love the other two already. This is another song that's mostly one big, long build-up, and it's a pretty slow burn the whole way through. And you'd think the build to the loud, chaotic era wouldn't necessarily need a climax of its own, but this one ends up having two. One towards the 4 minute mark where all the main motifs of the song kick in together for a thrilling instrumental peak and the one right at the very end. The only moment in the song of harsher vocals and massive chords, transitioning directly into the chaos of the next track. And I think what makes the song work so well for me is those motifs. From the lonesome, clean guitar line that goes throughout most of the first half, the additional guitar melodies that come in later and get faster reprises during that climax, and a hard-hitting chord riff that feels iconic despite only appearing in the last third of the song. And that's not even getting to the vocal performance. One of the most dynamic and emotive performances in the band's entire discography. Restrained when it needs to be, powerful and cathartic when the song reaches its loudest moments, and terrifyingly intense at its absolute peak. Or the atmospheric intense drums, always seeming to be one step ahead of the tempo of the rest of the instrumentation, yet only adding to the mood the song is creating each time. I feel like this one is easier to explain as successive of than the longer songs at the top of this list, and it really is mostly just how ridiculously memorable and re-listenable this one is for me that puts it up this high, but god does it deserve it. And yet, it's not even my favorite track off this album. That would be... While this isn't the song that originally got me into this band, more on that at number one. I didn't really dig deeply into this band's discography until after I got Anamnesis, a decision which was made when I saw a copy of the album up on an online storefront, wanted to check out a song or two just to make sure it was at least worth listening to, and ended up picking this song in particular. And yeah, one listen to this one was really all it took to sell me on this album. And more so, I found this one has wider appeal than a lot of the band's other songs, just for how goddamn cinematic this entire vibe is, without ever tapping to the harsher, more abrasive side of the band. No harsh vocals, no dissonant chord riffs, or noodling the chromatic guitar leads, just melodic guitar work, a powerhouse of a vocal performance, and some wonderful symphonic touches to push it over the top. This song is yet another song that exists mostly as one long build to its inevitable climax, and it may be the longest build of all, but it ebbs and flows along the way as it makes that climb, between some calmer, softer moments driven by some excellent bass grooves, broad and expansive courses with guitar, string, and vocal bombast, and a consistent 4-4 rhythm. Not until the most chaotic moments of the song does it break that steady build, but God, when the song gets to its peak. The choir-like vocals as the instrumentation starts falling the shambles underneath. The jagged guitar riffing is joined by strings and horns, creating this absolutely terrifying and overstimulating cavalcade of sound. It's, without exaggerating, one of the best musical moments I've heard in any song ever. And what better to break through that maelstrom of sound than one triumphant guitar melody, fighting against that wall until it breaks through and shifts the entire song towards its mood, convalescing in a fantastic and climactic guitar solo. And even when the song seems like it's run out of energy and only the vocals and a lone guitar line remain, the song slams you with one last bombastic finale. Basically, 
basically a curtain call for the first act of the album's three movement structure. Yeah, uh, this song, it definitely inspires a lot of emotion in me. I knew going into this list what two songs would top the list, and it's only by a mere threat that this one gets beat out by my number one. And that song? So yeah, as I mentioned before, this was the first song I heard from this band, and to this day it's still my favorite. Not because of that fact, but just because it's genuinely that good, and has basically everything I'd want out of a song by this band. Immediately the song slams you with a jagged and intense riff, reminiscent of Protest the Hero, but transitions off it smoothly into a brighter and denser riff, which really sets the tone of the song well. Triumphant beauty tempered by unsettling dissonance and chaos. Even as the song continues, through its cleaner verses and insanely, instantly memorable chorus, there's still the same energy the song kicked off with running throughout the entire song, all the way until right before the very end. The instrumental break of this one, too. God damn. It doesn't quite have that same cinematic spell that Agitation has, but it makes up for it by just being balls to the walls unhinged in the best possible way. Melodic chord riffing with constantly shifting rhythms, transitioning into a reprise of the intro, then going even further with that cheer and standing into one of the heaviest breakdowns of the band's entire career, and then just stripping that all away as it reaches its peak. Returning to a very lush and atmospheric build, it doesn't throw away the jagged rhythms that are the foundation of the song, and it builds that up into a climax of its own as the song approaches its finale, with probably the most emotionally fused guitar noodling I've ever heard. And then, well, okay, here's the thing. I didn't talk about Semerg on this list, the opening track of this album, and what happens here is just the hugest possible reprise that opening track, horns and all, and that doesn't quite hit as hard if you don't know the context, which is funny considering it's still the best part of the entire thing either way. Yeah, ending at the highest possible note is just the best way to end this song, this album, and this list. As is probably clear by now, I absolutely love this band. And just how diverse and yet consistent her albums, as well as her overall discography, have been. I couldn't keep this to only 10 songs, and I honestly could fill out a top 20 just from what the band has released so far, which by my count is only 38 full tracks. I'm definitely looking forward to see what these guys put out in the future, and I hope that this video inspires you to check out at least some of their stuff, if not dive into their entire discography outright. Anyways, see y'all next time!